What is up y'all? Welcome back to another video. It's the homie Koru here and we are kicking off our series on the Kybalion. So I have been very, very excited to do this series. I've been researching and studying a lot, reading over and over on the Kybalion to prep and get ready for this. Um, and so the way it's going to work is this will be an overview video and then we're going to do one video for each of the seven hermetic laws and then one more video at the end to kind of summarize and put it all together and recap and kind of finish it off and so in this video we're going to kind of go over the first section of the Kabbalion which kind of gives back history and sort of like sets the frame for the seven hermetic laws and then we're going to go brush right over each of the seven laws very quickly and then <clears throat> get ready to go into all of the following videos after. So I have my copy of The Kybalion um, <clears throat> by the Three Initiates is who it's compiled by is basically what it says. And um, you can pick up a copy. Um, as far as I know, this version is pretty universal. Um, and you can get an audiobook uh, version. There is a great audiobook free on YouTube. If you go to the Master Key Society, I will link that down in the description below. I will just listen to it while I'm working and uh, go over it uh, that way. And um, I highly recommend getting it, sitting down with it, reading through it. If you have not read it before, if it's your first time, um, definitely worth your time and attention. And it's actually pretty interesting. Um, so technically the, the backstory on the Kybalion, this is actually not the real Kybalion, basically. The three initiates, whoever they are, they decided to remain anonymous, wrote this in 1908. And they're basically pointing at the real Kybalion. So this, a more accurate title for this book would be a referential explanation to the Kybalion, which, what is the real Kybalion then? The real Kybalion was only transmitted, like in a lot of different ancient um, occult sects, was only transmitted verbally. And so the precepts were memorized and transmitted down to initiates through time and they weren't written down for protection and for you know a lot of different reasons but um, the original Kybalion goes back to ancient Egyptian and Greek and maybe a couple other influences around the time of um, the uh, Alexandria and before um, and basically it's the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus who would be Toth in the Egyptian pantheon Hermes in the Greek I think it is and then um, basically Mercury would be the associated um, deity or you know identity for the pantheon um, I think in Roman I could have those switched but Mercury Hermes Toth all the same guy Hermes Trismegistus um, Hermes Thrice Great, um, he was the master of the Hermetic philosophy, the Hermetic teacher, the original, the OG, the guy that you would want to go to if you were learning about magic mentalism back in the day. The lore says that he lived to be about 300, and um, you know, of course, there's debate over whether he was actually a real guy, whether he was, you know, kind of like similar to Shakespeare, right? Like, was it a real guy? Was it a one person who just called themselves this? Was it a group that kind of worked together? You know, blah, blah, blah. So we don't particularly know for sure, whatever, but um, Hermes is quoted as being the teacher of the Kybalion for sure. Um, and so that brings us to what did he teach? And that was Hermeticism. And the basics of Hermeticism are illustrated in that Kabbalion, especially with the first law of Hermeticism, which is all is mind. And so the basic fundamentals for Hermeticism is that it is mental. The universe is mental, all is mind, and Hermetics deals with mental precepts, mental attitudes, mental, mental ideologies. Um, and we're getting slightly ahead of ourselves here um, to back it up. The Hermetics and the Hermetic teachings 
basically, if you made it here, you're supposed to be here. And if it's your first time around, give it some time, give it some patience. And one of the main hermetic precepts is the lips of wisdom are closed except to the ears of understanding. So what does this mean? When we get into hermetics, when we get into magic, higher vibrational ideologies, methods, modalities, it's not for everybody. And by not for everybody, it's actually for a very few small group of people who are ready to hear it, who are ready to understand it, ready to apply themselves to it. And in the Kabbalion, this version of the Kabbalion, they state that sometimes it takes the work of lifetimes to be able to prep yourself and really dive in and get to the basic foundational um, laws of our reality, which are the seven hermetic laws and the laws of hermeticism. Um, interesting to note also that Christianity started off as hermeticism um, and it started off as a, um, a Jewish sect who was implementing the died and born, born again, um, you know, uh, figure that everyone was kind of doing around that time. They called the Dionysus, the cult of Osiris, having a died and born again figure within the religion as a mystery, as a an occult understanding of part of the nature of our reality um, really came into time around um, that same time period around Alexandria when all of those cultures had mixed and were melding in Alexandria in Egypt and you had the Egyptian mystery schools and you had the Greeks coming down and you had the Hebrews were there as well and the Persians everyone was melting in this ideology and everyone was like super high on you know science philosophy psychology magic all of these things were being blended together and so they do have passages in here in the Kabbalion that talk about Christianity and how it was born out of Hermeticism originally and then it was kind of hijacked and made secular and kind of like used as this other thing and that you know the hope is that it would eventually return to its roots and to the truth of what the religion is actually supposed to be about which is Hermeticism and um, you know you could say that Jesus is, Jesus is a Hermetic figure um, that it does essentially teach hermeticism and but you have to know how to read it and how to apply it and the truth behind the text which again the lips of wisdom are closed except to the ears of understanding which that phrase takes on a twofold nature one is that it is kind of useless and kind of unwise and kind of like throwing pearls before swine to try to explain all of the tenets of hermeticism and the universe and all of these things to people who are not willing, ready, or, you know, in a place to understand it. It's raining outside also. Sorry if that's coming through. I need to get this out. We're not re-recording this, so <laughs> hopefully it shouldn't be too bad, but it's thunderstorming right now. I don't know what that means, but um, so the lips of wisdom are closed to the, except to the ears of understanding, trying to explain and enforce and trying to lay it on to someone who's not ready to hear is totally useless. Do not throw your pearls before swine. But the other way to look at that phrase is that you could tell someone all is mine, the law of polarity. You could outline these things. You could explain the, the tenets of hermeticism. You could explain all these things that I've been talking about in these videos here, but people, it will be like gibberish to them. It will be like as if you started speaking ancient Egyptian to them and they're like, okay, and they move on and they're like, that was weird. And they never think about it again because you have to be in a place. It has to be, you know, you have to be ready to hear it. But the ears of understanding, if they're not open, then they won't hear. Even if you say it, they won't hear. So I think it's twofold. I think that phrase is twofold. And um, so if again, if you're here, welcome. You're ready. We're doing this. It's awesome. Um, and I, I will say real quick, we're going to do a series on the Tao as well. I love the Tao. Love the Tao Te Ching. I listen to it every couple months. It's so amazing. Um, but it reminds me of Hermeticism and the All is kind of a proxy. Not a proxy, but it, it's the same type of ideology as the Tao and the eternal Tao. All of the major religions of the world have all felt this and sought this and seen that there is this universal force that is the background layer to reality. And um, so, yeah, so the, the all, the Tao, all is one in Buddhism, 
you know, God the Father, Christianity, or whatever, but it's all the same thing, and um, so, yeah, we will get into the Tao at some point, but um, so the, the main precept of Hermeticism, like I said, is the all. The all is mind, and so that is the first of the seven Hermetic Laws, and the book that Kabbalion goes into the seven Hermetic Laws in detail, but before that it goes a, a bit in detail about the all and about what it means to have the all and what the all is. Um, and so the all is mind. It is not physical. It is not a dream. It is not whatever. The all is mind. All is one. All is mind. And one thing that they say is the all the all is in all. All things have the all in them. So the, the all is in all, and all is in the all. And so basically, it is the background layer of, you could say, consciousness, energy, that supports the entire reality. And so they go through in the Kybalian, how does the all create our world? And so the precept for that is that the all is all, so it can't create something outside of itself, right? We can create something that's outside of, we can write a book. This book is not part of me physically or anything like that, right? We can, we can do that. But if we think about the universe as being separate from the all, that would be incorrect because the all is all. So basically they reduce it in the book to the all creates the universe mentally because if you create mentally in your mind where is that when is that you're creating a world within your mind if you use your imagination to create a reality within your mind where is that energy from where is that going and that is what the all is doing is the all is creating our reality within its mind it's a little hard to wrap your head around but the universe is not actually physical either. We live in an illusion of separation. Now, you have to be careful because this does not mean that the world is a dream. The, the world, our world, the universe is not the all dreaming. Now that's, if you were dreaming, that would be similar in a sense to what the all is doing, right? Because in your dream, everything in your dreams is projected by your subconscious. Your mind is creating a world and populating it even with other people in that world, in that dream world, which are actually segments of yourself. So a lot of that makes sense, but our world is not a dream world. And because of the way that the nature of this uh, phenomenon happens, there are some people who get caught up in thinking that the world is in a dream state because they've seen some of these precepts, oh, the all is mind, like all of these things, but the, they can get lost. You could get lost if you start thinking that the world is just some dream, like it's meaningless, it's not real. It is real, but it isn't physical, if that makes sense, but it is not a dream. It is created by the all it is a mental creation it is the illusion of separation but it is real and that kind of ties into um the law of polarity which we'll get into obviously but you know all paradoxes can be reconciled so is our universe real well it is and it isn't all things are you know true and false at the same time all paradoxes can be reconciled all truths are half truths um which is a tenet of the Hermeticism and the Kabbalion. Um, we will get there, especially within the law of polarity. Um, and then that also brings us to, okay, well, if all is mind, our universe is a mental creation of the all. Why? Why? Why did the all create this universe, this world that we're in and us and everything? And it goes a little bit in detail in the book about why you know, people's, people's ideas of why. I think that's something a lot of people come to eventually. Why? Why are we here? What is going on? No matter what religion or background you have, a lot of people have that question. But I personally, I think the book kind of settles on this, and I personally would recommend this as well, is that there isn't a way for you to actually know. 
and trying to pursue the intention of the all and why it creates would be fruitless and frivolous, if not would take you away from this reality. What do I mean? If you were to finally understand why the all created our universe, you probably have reached such a close position to the all that our universe would be so far behind you that you'd be close to becoming one with the all and it would become you would become irrelevant to our universe if that makes sense. And our natural human inclinations of why our world would be created were so far away from the infinite wisdom and knowledge and and power and universality of the all that it would basically be fruitless to to try and discover why there are tons of ideas i'm sure you could dream up a thousand ideas of why our reality is here and why the all would create it but the fact is we can't know and if we did know our real this reality would start to become irrelevant because we'd be so close to the all that it wouldn't be relevant to us anymore that we would know and so it's kind of kind of a a, a null question to be honest um <clears throat> but we do know that the all created our universe through its power of will and will is part of mentalism and basically the all willed our universe into reality and through its will created our universe and created all that there is and that is following the law of correspondence as above so below that is the way that we create when we use our power of will we can manifest into reality that which we have our will set upon and this is basically part of all of the laws of the Kabbalion in my perspective the way that I see it there are seven hermetic laws the first law is all of the laws and it's like a fractal of the the first law all is mind the the law of uh, mentalism is explained by the other six laws completing the seven laws all of the laws are explaining the first law which is singular the all is mind the law of mentalism all is mind and as we go through the laws you'll start to see hopefully that there is nothing else except for mind everything starts as mind and descends into reality and that's kind of the whole blueprint for our reality and the way that it becomes useful instead of just mental and just studying they talk about in the kaibalian what good is it if you, this never becomes used like if you just stay in this mental state of studying these types of things where does that take you if you never actually apply it to the reality that you're living in be here be now be in the reality and use these laws to help benefit your life and to grow spiritually and physically in the world but that's how it happens the all created mentally through its power of will we create mentally through our power of will and so this kind of goes into the also the the prospect of the worlds of being versus the worlds of becoming and the all would be in the world of being it's unchangeable it's infinite it never changes it is as it is and it always is and it always is the all nothing can be added or taken from the all we are not like that. We are in the world of becoming. We are in the world of growing and changing. And so as an opposite to the all, actually nothing here is consistent. Nothing here ever, ever stays the same, which goes into the law of vibration. Everything's moving, nothing is at rest. Nothing is ever the same in our reality. The only thing that's ever the same in our reality is the fact that everything is always changing. Nothing is ever the same. Everything's always changing in our reality, and that is kind of as the law of polarity we are at the bottom end of the polarity of becoming whereas the all and and the origin of our reality the all is in the world of becoming on the other end of the pole and so as a basic tenet for the usability for all of this information it comes down to the fact that one of the biggest things all throughout the Kaibalion that's mentioned over and over again is that the purpose of these laws again to benefit your life is that by becoming accustomed with the laws of Hermeticism the seven laws of Hermeticism of the Kaibalion you can help to transform your life by using these laws <clears throat> it says later in the Kaibalion that um, you know trying to force reality to change is 
is a lower objective that is not fruitful. But if you become a servant, you can become master. And by that they mean if you become a servant and if you work with the laws of Hermeticism, you can transmute reality, the lower reality, by applying the higher laws to the lower laws. And the whole goal of the Kaibalan is to raise your vibration and raise to that positive vibration in order to transmute and change the lower. You apply the higher to the lower to transmute it. You apply the higher laws to the lower forms of reality to transmute them and raise the vibration. <clears throat> and so that leads us into, well, what are the seven laws? I've, I've mentioned most of them here so far <laughs> by going through this kind of general overview, but um, let's go ahead. I'm, I've been working on memorizing them. I'm pretty close. Um, and so the seven laws are, number one, the, print, the, the law of mentalism, all is mind. Number two, the law of correspondence, as above, so below. Number three, the law of vibration. Everything moves, nothing is at rest. Number four, the law of polarity. Everything is one thing. It just exists at different vibrations and different poles of the same. All truths are half-truths. All paradoxes can be reconciled. Number five, the principle of rhythm. Everything has an inward and outward motion. Everything goes and comes back. The law of the swing to one side is the law of the swing to the other. The pendulum swings. Number six, the principle of cause and effect. There is no chance. There is no luck. Everything is an effect of a cause. Saying something is luck or chance is simply a law not being recognized. And the seventh law, the principle of gender. Gender exists on all planes. Everything exists as male or female. And positive and negative isn't necessarily the way to go unless you're talking about it in terms of electricity. Um, meaning a positive energetic force and a negative receptive force. Um, and the law of gender basically applies that in order to create anything, a masculine and a feminine force have to join together to create something new. And uh, that one could be a little confusing if you're new. It's the last one. And of course, I, lo I love that it's the last one. It's the seventh one because going from the state of being, the first law, the law of mentalism, being almost like the world of being, it's static, right? Each of the seven laws, like I said, explain the first law. And as it goes, it's almost as if it's explaining individual sections of the way that the reality, our reality works and the way that the all manifests by its power of will. So you start with the principle of mentalism, all is mind. <clears throat> and then the law of correspondence says that as above, so below. So all is mind, but we are in the illusion of polarity and everything that happens from mind is manifested into reality as above, so below. And that is a vibration. It's 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 a correspondence between two things, which is the third law, the law of vibration. Everything is moving, nothing is ever at rest. And they do say in the Kabbalion that the all is in such a high rate of vibration, it's so inconceivably fast that it appears to be still. Um, but because of that vibration, then you get the fourth law, the law of polarity, which is that everything exists on poles. Everything's vibrating back and forth, so you create two poles as it's vibrating, and you go back and forth between those poles. And then because you're going back and forth between these two poles and the law of polarity, the fifth law, the law of rhythm, illustrates that you have to move back and forth between those and that it, as you swing once, you'll swing back the other way, which... If you're over here and you come back over here, that creates a cause and effect, which is the sixth law, the law of cause and effect. And if you have two poles that are causing and affecting, that creates the seventh law, the, the law of gender, which states that the masculine pushes towards the feminine, the feminine receives and then creates. And that gets us back down to our reality and what we do in our reality, we are creators, we create in our reality, so then, bam, there it is, that's the last one, which is the first one, the all is mind, creating, the principle of gender, how we create, create have a masculine and a feminine, and those combine to create. Um, and the masculine and the feminine, of course, is not just physical, we'll go, we'll go in depth for, for that one, 
that one is definitely kind of complicated, but I hope that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> the Kybalion, I would highly recommend reading to it, listening to it. If you're new to the Kybalion, do it, uh, read it a few times. Like, don't even try to understand it the first time if, if it's not clicking, just do it again. Just read through it again, and as you go, it'll start to sink into your subconscious. It'll start to seed your mind, and it'll start to click. And you'll, you know, you'll start to see examples of it in the world, and you'll be like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense." But um, I would recommend reading it, diving in, and also stick around, of course, because we're going to keep going through um, the Kybalion and really go in depth on each of the seven laws. <clears throat> it is an excellent hermetic primer if you're new to magic mentalism hermeticism the anything occult the kybalion is an amazing place to start if you're starting and even if you just studied the kybalion for the rest of your life you'd be good you could keep going and it would continue and continue to produce positive results and you'd probably continue to dive deeper and deeper into each of the laws and they continue to show up in your life as a positive force for transforming and transmuting which of course the Kabbalion is huge on transmutation that's what we do is transmute we transmute lead into gold it's not an actual physical thing that alchemists were claiming to do in the real world they weren't taking physical lead and trying to convert it to gold it's a mental process of transmutation you apply the higher to the lower and you transmute that which is mundane into that which is spiritual which is which is a high vibration which is magical so obviously i'm kind of hype on this i love this i love the kybalion it's such an excellent primer I'm going to keep rambling if I don't cut it off here. Stay tuned. We're going to go into the law of mentalism first. That video is going to come out next. Appreciate you guys so much for sticking around. Uh, love you guys. Feel free to subscribe, like. Any questions, leave them down in the comments. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.